The Canon XL2 represents a total breakthrough for the digital motion photographer. If your projects demand world-class picture quality, extremely high-end image control, total flexibility, and a powerful feature set unmatched by any other camcorder on the planet, the XL2 is absolutely your best choice. The original XL1 was released in 1997 and had huge success among digital filmmakers, broadcast producers, and video creators in corporate, education, and nonprofit areas. In 2001, the XL1S brought several new features to the XL1. The XL2 is not an updated XL1S. The only things that remain unchanged from the XL1S are the mic, the batteries and charger, and the lens mount. Everything else is brand new. The XL2 combines genuine Canon optics with an interchangeable lens system, true widescreen progressive scan chips, multiple frame rate capture, and legendary Canon image processing quality. Never before has so much creative power been put in the hands of the desktop movie maker for corporate, education, events, broadcast, or digital filmmaking. The footage you see on this DVD was all shot with the XL2 and edited in native DV format with no color correction, filters, or post-production processing of any kind except where specifically noted. The XL2 introduces a new lens to the XL series, Canon's 20X Professional L-Series Fluorite Lens. Canon is known worldwide for its high-quality optics, manufacturing many lenses for film, broadcast, and still photography. The new 20X lens is an amazing feat of engineering, quality, and features, so we're going to spend a little time exploring it. This lens comes standard on the XL2 and is the equivalent, in 35mm format, of a 42.3 to 846mm lens when the camera is recording in 16.9 widescreen format. In the 4-3 aspect ratio, it's the equivalent, in 35mm format, of a 51.8 to 1036mm lens. The 20 times optical zoom range gives you the power to get shots you can never get with a 10 or 12 times zoom lens. With 20 times zoom, you can shoot a distant scene or blow up the background for dramatic effect. You can also use the zoom to intensify a shallow depth of field effect by enlarging an out of focus background. The new 20x lens was engineered to provide a shallower depth of field to allow digital filmmakers to achieve cinematic looks by keeping the subject in focus and the background and foreground out of focus. You can switch zoom to variable, so the zoom speed depends on how far the zoom rocker is pressed, or to constant, where you can set the zoom speed to one of 16 speeds, from very fast, to an ultra slow creep zoom that works well for interviews or any shot where you want an almost imperceptible zoom in. The lens uses fluorite to minimize chromatic aberration evident in conventional lenses and provide the ultimate in clarity and image quality. Here's a simulation of chromatic aberration, seen as a thin, red, or blue fringe around areas of high contrast. The Canon 20X lens shows no fringing, even on a very high contrast transition from light to dark. Canon's superb optical stabilization system corrects small camera movements instantly, so even handheld shots at telephoto focal lengths are smooth and steady. And since it is optical, unlike electronic image stabilizers, there's no loss of image quality. Canon's Super Range Optical Image Stabilization uses a gyro sensor to detect camcorder vibration, then controls two Vera Angle prisms that continuously correct the path of the incoming light. In addition, Super Range OIS examines the image from the CCDs to detect low frequency vibrations missed by the gyro and also uses that data to refine the movement of the prism. This greatly improves performance for a low frequency vibration, resulting in the most advanced optical image stabilization available today. This lens has a maximum aperture of f1.6, variable to f3.4 at full telephoto, which aids in capturing quality video in low light conditions, and also gives you more flexibility to set up for a shallow depth of field. There are two neutral density filters on the lens to bring down exposure either three or six stops when shooting in bright conditions or when wanting to keep the iris open for a shallower depth of field. The lens can be switched from auto to manual focus. The focus ring and the zoom ring are independent controls on the 20X lens. They're servo controlled and the speed can be changed by the speed of the rotation of the ring. When in auto focus, Moving the manual ring will override the autofocus. When in manual focus mode, 
you can temporarily engage autofocus by pressing the set button on the lens. There's also a zoom control on the hand grip that can be set to low, medium, high, or variable speeds, and one on the top handle that comes in handy when shooting low to the ground. You can set an ending zoom point, then change the zoom and return to that framing at a programmable speed by pressing the on button. Even cooler, the innovative focus preset feature allows you to set an ending focus point, then change the focus to a starting position and trigger the focus pull with the push of a button. This makes it easy to do racking focus moves to draw the viewer's attention, or follow focus set to a slow speed to keep a moving subject in focus. The key feature of the Canon XL series camcorders, and the only mini DV camcorders with this feature, is the XL mount interchangeable lens system. The reason more independent films have been shot with the XL series than any other digital camcorder is that a professional DP would never invest in a fixed lens camcorder. Even if you start with just the standard 20x lens, which is versatile enough for almost any situation, you know you have the option to change lenses in the future. In the Canon XL system, there are currently four lenses. The new 20x, the 16x, 16x manual, and 3x wide. The Canon 3x wide angle lens provides dramatic wide angle shots unobtainable from a lens adapter. With the 16x manual, you have the same kind of direct control of the glass you have with a film camera, with focus markings right on the barrel. Or, using an XL system adapter, the entire range of Canon photographic lenses are available, as well as third-party lenses. The XL2 has three widescreen progressive scan CCDs. When shooting in 16.9 mode, you're using more of the CCD surface than in 4.3 mode, so you're actually gaining resolution rather than losing it like most other digital camcorders. The 4x3 mode uses 350,000 pixels on each chip, and the 16.9 mode uses 460,000 pixels for an amazingly sharp, crystal clear picture. The XL2 incorporates Canon's pixel shift technology which provides for better low-light performance and better overall color reproduction. Now let's look inside the XL2 at the most advanced imaging feature set available on any camcorder on the market. Video has certain characteristics that identify it as video, from frame rate to gamma curve to contrast properties. Likewise, projects shot on 35mm film have certain characteristics that identify it as film. As we go through the XL2, you'll see many features that are adjustable or switchable between video and film-like settings. The XL2 goes further than any other camcorder in bringing you a big-time Hollywood cinematic look when you want it that truly bridges the gap between video and film. And because Canon utilizes a 12-bit digital signal processor, maximum image quality is preserved. 60i, meaning 60 fields per second interlaced, is the normal video frame rate that's been in use for decades. It's the standard for broadcast television, so almost everything you see on TV that wasn't shot on film was shot and displayed in 60i. 60i captures motion 60 times each second, so use 60i when you want the typical, smooth, fluid look of video. But when you want to shoot something artistic and film-like, you want the cinematic effect of a slower frame rate. The XL2 provides three other options. The 24p standard mode allows you to shoot 24 frame per second video identical to a motion picture film camera. Just as important as 24p is the shutter speed of 1 48th of a second. This is the standard shutter speed that motion film cameras use and gives you the same motion blur characteristics as film footage. And through an internal 2-3 pull-down process, these frames are transferred to normal 29.97 NTSC video just like a project was shot on film, then transferred to video for editing at 29.97 just like any other video footage. Your editing system will never know the difference since the signal is 100% NTSC compatible. If you're shooting a project specifically to blow up to film and project in theaters, the XL2 also has an advanced 24p mode with a 2-3-3-2 cadence. Many popular editing systems are smart enough to discard the extra frames from footage shot in this mode so you can edit at a true 24 frames per second, 
just like the footage was shot on film. If you're not going to film, you might find 24p is a little too stroby and staccato to do some camera moves, like a medium pan. In this case, the XL2 has a true progressive scan 30 frame per second mode that's a little smoother than 24, but still retains the cool cinematic look. Shooting in progressive scan offers many benefits. If you'll be putting the video on the web, 24 or 30p will provide better quality since every other field doesn't have to be blended or thrown away. And you can also pull clear still frames from your footage without interlacing artifacts. But most importantly, whether you're shooting marketing or educational videos, broadcast commercials or shows, or feature films, shooting in 24p or 30p provides a high budget cinematic look that your viewers will associate with project shot on film and will make your project more captivating and draw the viewer's attention more than 60i video. You can program and store three custom presets in the XL2. Each preset gives you total control over the look and color space of your image, with a wide range of parameters you can tweak to get a wide variety of looks, from old Hollywood to modern cutting edge looks. Some of these parameters cannot be duplicated using any color correction or any other post-production process. Once your custom presets are tweaked to perfection, you can even transfer them to another XL2 via Firewire. Let's look through the highlights of the custom preset menu. First, we'll clear this preset to return it to factory settings. First, we'll look at Gamma. The chips in a video camera respond in a certain way to variations in brightness and color in the image captured by the lens. This Gamma curve gives video its distinctive signature. When switching to the XL2 Cine setting, you're engaging sophisticated modeling circuitry utilizing Canon's patented color technology, so the chips respond to chroma and luma variations like popular film stocks used in Hollywood film production. Here's Video Gamma. Here's Film Gamma. Video. Film. Once again, back to video. And now back to this Cine film setting. Regardless of your subject and set, when switched to the Cine setting, your image will capture color and light like 35mm film. One giveaway that you shot on video is how video acts when overexposed. Video doesn't have as much latitude as film, and so overexposes less gracefully. So the transition between the image and pure white area is more abrupt. The knee setting adjusts how quickly the highlights roll off as they approach the clip point, meaning the level at which the image overexposes and goes pure white. The low setting softens the curve to extend the XL2's highlight response for a more film-like, smoother transition into overexposed areas, where the high setting will push more highlights to white and result in a more sudden transition. With less latitude than film, it's more difficult to shoot video in high contrast situations like daylight exteriors. Since video will go pure white and pure black sooner than film, with most video cameras it's usually impossible to capture detail and shadow areas without overexposing the shot. With the XL2's total image control, if we need more detail in the shadows, we can use three different controls to affect how the XL2 responds to darker parts of the image. If we stretch the blacks, we can smooth the curve to extend the lighter portions of the shadow areas of the image and bring out more detail. Also, we can bring up the setup level and the master pedestal to lighten all dark areas. Another challenge is when the background is much brighter than the subject, but you want to capture detail in both subject and background. The black level, setup level, and master pedestal will let us reduce contrast and get the shot. Then while editing, we can adjust contrast the way we want it. For this shot, we'll stretch the blacks, bring the setup level up all the way, and bring the master pedestal up almost all the way. Here's the original shot, and here's the shot after changing contrast in post. Shooting with other cameras without this kind of contrast control, we would have to choose between blowing out the background, which is too bad because it's nice looking for a shot like this, or sacrificing our subject, which is even worse. And there's no way to fix it in post-production. Remember, you can always increase contrast in post, but you can never restore detail in pure black or white areas of the image. With the XL2, you have the option to shoot low contrast and punch up contrast later in post-production. Another, quite opposite use for the black level controls is when you want dark areas of the frame completely black. 
One example of this would be when shooting in low key lighting and wanting a cinematic film like look. Video is often associated with dark gray, milky, usually noisy black areas, while with projected 35mm film, a dark area in the frame will be a pure, rich, deep black. Here's a shot with the black stretched and the setup level in Master Pedestal increased. This is a soap opera-ish look associated with video. If we press the blacks and drop the master pedestal and the setup level, any parts of the picture that were dark go completely black for a rich, punchy, cinematic look that's not at all video-like. With the XL2's total image control, all these looks can be programmed and recalled instantly. We can switch the color matrix to Cine for more film-like color imaging and color gain, which we can adjust for muted colors, full black and white, or we can bring it up all the way to a technicolor level of saturation. Color phase will shift the colors more red or more green. On the next page, we can see we have separate control over red, green, and blue levels. We can pump up the reds and greens, and then lower the blues for a European Amelie film look where the colors are exaggerated. We can also increase the blues for a colder look, or increase the greens for a matrix or bleach bypass effect. If you're shooting in 60i mode and your talent wears a dense pattern, or your shot has small horizontal lines, because of the nature of interlaced video, these areas of the picture will jitter or chatter 60 times each second. In this case, you can set V detail to low, which will blend adjacent fields, decreasing vertical detail somewhat, but also allowing you to get the shot without the distracting jitter. The sharpness control enhances the edges between areas of contrasting color or brightness for a sharper appearing picture. Most sharpness controls, when increased, will give an extremely harsh, gritty, noisy quality to the picture, but the XL2 sharpness adds clarity without noise or harshness. Coring will reduce chroma level in unimportant shadow areas, which will drop the noise level without losing any detail or any chroma information in lighter areas. The noise reduction control can be set to high, medium, or low to further eliminate any noise if present. All of these parameters make up a single custom preset, which can be instantly recalled using the buttons on top of the XL2. Some of these functions can be mimicked in post-production, but shooting footage the way you want it saves you a lot of tweaking time, render time, and hard drive space while editing. The XL2 has seven shooting modes. The easy recording mode is for inexperienced shooters and locks all controls in automatic. The auto setting lets you switch some functions to manual and keep others in automatic. In shutter priority mode, the XL2 will keep a fixed shutter speed but vary the iris based on light levels. In aperture priority, you can manually adjust the iris to any setting and the XL2 will vary the shutter speed to adjust exposure. This is helpful when you want to keep the iris wide open but still want some automatic exposure control. Spotlight mode is an automatic setting to use when the subject is brightly lit with a dark background. Low light mode lowers the shutter speed to bring up exposure. When shooting in any automatic exposure mode, you can use the AE shift dial to fine tune the exposure up or down. The XL2 records SMPTE timecode with several options. We can change timecode from drop to non-drop formats. Under count up, we can choose Rec Run, which, like most DV camcorders, will run timecode every time the record button is pressed, and stop when the recording is stopped. When restarted, timecode will pick up where it left off. Notice when we stop recording at just over 30 seconds, the camcorder backs up slightly to ensure there is no break in timecode when we start recording again. Rec Run PS allows us to preset the timecode starting point, so the timecode on the second tape on a shoot can start at 2 hours. Free Run, once started, will run timecode whether recording or not, making it really useful when doing multi-camera shoots. You can get all shooters together and synchronize their start points, and the timecode will stay synced whether they're rolling or not. 
Under VCR Setup, we can also specify user bit data, which can come in handy with some editing systems. The XL2 also generates standard SMPTE color bars with 1 kHz tone, both negative 12 dB and negative 20 dB, for setting up video and audio monitors and edit suites. Under the camera setup menu, we can turn on the zebra function to help set exposure. The zebra function displays a pattern of stripes over areas of the image that are above the specified threshold. The threshold can be set to five different intervals from 80 to 100 IRE. And you can assign zebra on off to a custom key, so you can turn it on when setting lighting and exposure, then turn it off with one push of a button while you're shooting. The XL2 has a sophisticated skin detail level feature. By adjusting the hue, chroma, area, and Y level controls, you can isolate the area of the picture with flesh tones and reduce detail in those areas without affecting sharpness in eyes, hair, or anywhere else in the frame. This way, you can smooth the subject's skin without losing any clarity in the rest of the image. Here is skin detail off, and here is high smoothing. Once again, we'll turn it off, and now we'll turn back on high smoothing. This is a very powerful feature found in high-end cameras costing tens of thousands of dollars more. The XL2 gives you instant access to the essential professional camera controls. Iris, shutter speed, gain, and white balance. The iris control goes from a fully closed position to an f-stop range of 16 all the way to a big 1.6 for a beautiful shallow depth of field. When you need brighter exposure than lighting and the iris can bring you, the XL2 has 7 degrees of gain. You can set the gain at negative 3 to essentially eliminate any noise. In the automatic setting, the XL2 will ride gain based on the brightness of the scene. And then there are 0, plus 3, plus 6, plus 12, and even an amazing plus 18 setting for shooting in extremely dark conditions. Here's a shot at plus 6 gain, lit by a single candle with shutter speed at 1 30th of a second, and a custom preset designed for the shot. Notice how clean the shot is, without the noise you would ordinarily associate with low light conditions. The shutter speed controls are located right by the iris and can set the shutter speed from 1 8th of a second for extreme light sensitivity and motion blur, all the way to 1 15,000th of a second to capture crystal clear slow-mo or stills from fast moving objects. Here's a shot at 1 8th shutter speed, now 1 15th, 1 30th, 1 60th and here's bumping it up to 1 1000th. 1, Notice the strobe staccato motion look. Here's some slow motion from a shutter speed of 1 60th and here's from 1 1000th of a second. When in 24 frame mode the XL2 offers a 1 48th of a second shutter speed, identical to motion film cameras. The XL2 has automatic white balance and presets for 5600 Kelvin daylight and 3200 Kelvin tungsten. You can also store up to three custom white balance settings. If there are CRT computer displays in the shot, Due to the difference between the scan rate of video and the scan rate of the CRTs, they will show a rolling bar or distracting strobing or flickering. The clear scan feature will synchronize the frame rate with the CRTs to eliminate the problem. The XL2 has a comprehensive interval timer that allows you to shoot amazing time-lapse footage. You can set an interval of 30 seconds, 1 minute, 5 minutes, or 10 minutes. Every time this interval is elapsed, the XL2 will record half a second, one second, one and a half, or two seconds. If you set the XL2 to record half a second every 10 minutes, a one hour tape will last over a month and a half. Under the VCR setup menu, you can switch the power save option to VCR stop rather than shut off. 
which is great because the XL2 will disengage the tape transport while you're getting your shot set up to save wear on the tape and heads, but will still leave the display active. This is also where you set user bit data. Under display setup, with TV screen, you can choose whether the data overlays go out the S-Video output. This function can be assigned to a custom key as well. Audio level determines whether you'll see audio levels on the display, and with guide info, you can choose to display custom key assignments or date and time when the guide info is active. You can also set date format and whether the user data code shows on the display. Under the system menu, you choose the function of the custom keys. If you're using two XL2s in the same location, you can use two wireless remotes and control each XL2 independently. The XL2's viewfinder can be used when shooting handheld or daylight exteriors when it's hard to see the image on a flip out screen. When tripod mounted, you can convert the viewfinder to a 2 inch high resolution LCD with a sharp, clear, bright image. The image is shown in 4 3 or 16 9 letterbox depending on the shooting aspect ratio. The overlay information can be completely turned off with the press of a button. Under display setup, under the EVF setup, you can set brightness, contrast, color and sharpness of the viewfinder display to suit any shooting conditions. The viewfinder position can be adjusted for total shooting comfort. Two custom programmable keys are available on the XL2, both in camera mode and VCR mode. In camera mode, these keys can be set to control index right, turn the zebra pattern on and off, VCR stop, remove overlays on the TV screen, change the zoom grip speed or zoom handle speed, or switch to audio 1 in or audio 2 in. This means, for example, you can instantly turn zebra and displays off so they don't interfere with framing, then back on when you need them. The XL2's handle is equipped with a record and zoom control for low angle operation. You can lock these controls to prevent accidental operation. The XL2 is equipped with the most sophisticated, high quality audio features available on any comparable camcorder. Super clean, high fidelity audio circuitry eliminates the noise, hum, and hiss that has plagued other digital camcorders. The manual auto level control knobs are recessed, so you can set and adjust levels without opening the audio panel door, while still making it impossible to accidentally change the levels, even when shooting handheld. Opening the panel door, we can see two separate audio subsystems. The audio 1 section can be switched to the camera mounted mic, where you can engage an optional 20 dB pad for very loud shooting conditions. You can also switch audio 1 to the line level inputs to accept audio from a mixing board or other sound source. Or you can switch audio 1 to record from the two built-in balanced XLR mic inputs on the back of the XL2. These inputs provide switchable 48 volt phantom power to professional balance condenser mics. Audio meter displays show up on the camera body in the backlit display, in the viewfinder, and optionally in the video outputs. The XL2 is very unique in that it can record four discrete channels of audio simultaneously at the DV standard 32 kHz 12 bit digital quality level. The four channels could all be line level sources a combination of the XLR inputs and line levels, or by attaching the optional MA300, the XL2 has the amazing capability of recording four balanced XLR mic inputs at once. Either audio subsystem is switchable to auto level control with Canon's intelligent auto gain control which avoids the pumping and breathing artifacts of other auto level gain circuits. The headphone jack and level control are positioned above the firewire terminal. To round out the selection of inputs and outputs are an S-Video input and output, composite video jacks in both RCA and professional BNC connectors, and a standard LANC control for plugging in external remote controllers. You can slave an external recording unit to the XL2 that is controlled through the DV terminal to record on a second tape for backup or a disk drive. This concludes the XL2 feature tour. We hope this DVD has been helpful and informative. To find out more about the XL2 and to find out where to buy, please visit canondv.com.
For more information on the entire video creation process, please visit dvcreators.net. Along with having an excellent camera like the Canon XL2, the key to capturing stunningly beautiful, cinematic quality footage is lighting. DV Enlightenment is a brilliant, enlightening course on DVD covering every aspect of professional lighting theory and technique, from essential lighting concepts, techniques, and gear to advanced lighting secrets and tricks. This DVD has been a hit at many of the industry's biggest trade shows and has received stellar reviews from every reviewer. In Light Properties, you'll learn about understanding light and shadow, hard and soft light, color temperature, light direction, motivated lighting, as well as lighting gear like soft boxes, umbrellas, gels, reflectors, flags, black wrap, and cookies. In the next section, you'll learn the dvcreators.net four-point lighting method, a brilliant, comprehensive lighting method for getting gorgeous-looking footage in any location for any mood. We'll also describe key light options, fill and ambient light, lighting ratio, backlight, rim light and kickers, background lighting, high key and low key lighting. In working with sunlight, we'll reveal the Hollywood secret to shooting beautiful footage with sunlight, from positioning the camera, subject and sun outdoors, to shooting interiors with daylight, and also the use of reflectors and diffusers. In lighting green screen, we'll show the secret dvcreators.net method for evenly lighting chroma key backgrounds. There are also sections showing lighting tips for white limbo and black limbo, as well as a secret cane technique using a white background. The bright idea section is a whole series of illuminating tips and tricks for getting cinematic looks in a variety of situations and includes lighting special effects using practicals, accent lighting, candlelight, TV and computer light, the killer single light technique, and using fog. The DV Enlightenment DVD is region free and will play in any DVD player or computer with DVD playback. To order, go to www.dvcreators.net and if you type XL2 Tour Offer in the notes box when checking out, you'll receive the $99 DV Enlightenment course for only $75 and you'll also receive a free copy of Shooting Awesome Video, a CD with a basic production course covering planning, camera operation, shooting aesthetics, lighting and location sound or call 1-800-965-3976 and ask for the special XL2 tour offer. Thanks for watching. 